God bless and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others and let others do. One of my friends said, who is that young guy that's talking about rock climbing on your uh, on your Zoom sessions? I said, he's not a young guy. He fucker's 80 years old. He said, no. I said, he's only 55. And the guy went, wow. So I liked your new picture, by the way. Fuck, that was awesome. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I am uh, usually on the working end of the lens. So uh, yeah. It was an opportunity to get a decent shot of myself. Look, look at those muscles. He looks a little nervous. Look at his facial expression. Holy shit. See. He's like, I can see his facial expression, and he looks a little nervous. <laughs> Not nervous. You're, you're, Glenn, you're projecting. I know. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> well, what you can see that I've got both hands in, in uh, what I will call good hand holds, and my feet are mm, okay, but – Following that, to my left, things get very blank. So that's what the look on my face is. Here it comes, and uh, I fell shortly after that. So, so if you if you fall from that position, and you're hanging right there where the mouse is, how the hell do you get back up there? <laughs> Shit. Well, if if your belayer keeps your rope rope fairly tight, then you don't fall very far, and you can get back on. So you got to climb the rope, which there's a tech need to do it it's kind of strenuous or you just pack it in and you lower it to the ground I'll, I'll show you his pictures while we're here is this you yeah that's me where's that oh is that you too yeah <laughs> so who are you dating then <laughs> <laughs> god what beautiful pictures oh man he's a good photographer I took all those with my iphone well except for that one my friend took it with my iphone Last time uh, we talked about like owning your shit and stuff and owning yeah. your fuck ups. So I've been dealing with, you know, I I delayed on so much bullshit paperwork and all that, and um, now I'm dealing with like some fuck ups because of some deadlines I missed and all that, and um, and so like I'm kind of beating myself up about it, and I was wondering like like I know that 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 doesn't solve anything. But uh, do you have any like techniques for just like moving on like from the fuck up? Because it's just like feels like shit. And the fuck ups are what do you mean at work? You didn't turn work in on time or what? What are you talking no, about? No, no, it's like personal stuff. Like I delayed uh, filing stuff for my tax returns, so they have like a penalty and then um, uh, things like that. Okay. And you want to know how to how to let go of that and go on with your life? Yeah. Well, one of the ways is the three-column exercise. That's one way. The other way is to tell somebody who you know. You can even tell us. Whatever. Do the sentence completions by yourself for a while. The good thing about fucking up might be I get some mileage. The mileage I get out of fucking up might be stuff like that. Variations on that topic. Trying to find out what the hell good there is happening. A lot of people, I'm going to give you a little brief lesson. I'm not supposed to prime the pump. <clears throat> the good thing about fucking up sometimes is I don't deserve to be successful. And that's, that's a shame because that's very common. And it's been beaten into you by somebody that you don't deserve to be successful. And you have accepted that. I'm just guessing on some level, um, your subconscious is keeping you from being successful by maybe you failed somewhere in the past and you said, I don't ever want to fail again. So one way to not fail is to not do anything. So. We, tr we can deceive ourselves so many fucking ways it's horrible, but I'm saying that's a common thing, and you can explore that while you're doing your sentence completions. Remember to video record it because your facial expressions 
will tell you just as much as your tone of voice. Okay, does that help? The three, I would do the three column exercise at work on company time. <laughs> What is, what is the three-column exercise? Oh, my goodness. In the left column of a, a tablet paper, left column, what I did, what happened, what I wish I would have done. Okay, what I did, what happened, and what I wish I would have done. Okay? Uh, I forgot about sending my taxes in or I didn't go to the accountant. Tell whatever you did, what happened. Uh, I had to pay a fine and I'm beating myself up about it. What do I wish I would have done? Paid it on time. I don't know what you what you wish you would have done, but whatever you wish you would have done over there in the right. Now that's a weird way of behavior change in that you see it with your eyes and you're writing it with your hand. This you don't type this, you write it with with a pen. Because that gets it into your brain in a different way than just saying it out loud. Okay, that's one way. I don't know if it'll work. All, my attitude is I'm like Brandon. I'm an eclectic. Take from the whole world of psychology the tool that might help. This is behavior mod. There, you know, it's this whole cover your ass kind of mindset and everything else. This person effectively takes them out, out of their, takes themselves out of the running. People don't even approach them or uh, don't assign them any work because they know they won't get any results. So that is deadwood over there and uh and it, what's the killer on that one is my answer has been that those folks usually get good reviews because they never make any mistakes and, <laughs> whereas myself you know where i was constantly had my uh, you know, sh shoulder in the yoke and i was doing all kinds of stuff occasionally i would make a mistake right and it was you know always at review time it's what have you done for me lately yeah, holy shit. But anyway, that's just another version of that same thing. I wrote something about that in Office Politics. You remember what I wrote about that? Uh, not specifically. Review. Most... The annual review. Yes. What you do in the last quarter. You remember what I wrote? No, I do not. But I... Okay. You save up all the problems for the last quarter, then you solve them all, and you put it in a memo and tell the guy, here's a little tr summary of what I've done recently. And I saved this much money, I got so-and-so fired, whatever the fuck you did is good, and I have some plans for next year. That kind of a memo, just to your boss, and a copy of yourself, and hand it to him, say, I just here's a little summary before we start of what I've accomplished. And what that does is put the KY right on the fucking skids. Right? He reads that, and I don't know if you watch boxing, but the way they score the boxing is they award the round one way or the other at the end of the round. So the idea is to put on a big flurry at the end of the round. All right? Save your energy, and then right before the bell, say 20 seconds before the bell, just give this motherfucker everything you got and dance away. And the judge can't help but score you the round in your favor. Same, same psychology happens here. What have you done for me lately? That's exactly right. You don't say, well, I fucked up back in April on that such and so. None of that. He, if he's worried about that, you won't get the risk. I've been listening to uh, different podcasts than I usually listen to. I found this guy. Uh, I mean, I've known about him since I was in college. <clears throat> E.O. Wilson. And uh, he's famous um, for studying ants. And <laughs> he's probably about 80 now, and he gave, gave this great lecture on uh, the evolution of culture. And he said something that I found very funny. He said, uh, 1970, I was a professor at Harvard, and I made this bold statement that man has instincts. And they almost fired me because that wasn't the dogma in those days. Beat, beat. I was right. <laughs> it's just wonderful. Anyway, he explains how uh, culture evolves with uh, ordinary evolution. We're, we're learning, the tribe's learning. It's becoming part of the collective knowledge of that group you're in. 
and then helps you deal with another group and so on. And pretty soon you get a city state and then you get a nation. And at the nation level, everybody can talk to everybody and ideas get exchanged and everything gets wonderful. And you learn lots of stuff just for your parents telling you, don't touch this, don't do that, don't eat shit in public, stuff like that. That if you lived in a hunter-gatherer group, you wouldn't have this big database to help you. So I never understood that, but now I got it. I'm really enjoying it. The evolution of culture. If you're an egghead like me and you like that shit, look it up. So I know you were uh, deriding these earbud things the, uh, with, with Sophie and whatever. And I've got a pair of these earbuds that I just got. Well, thank God they're not white. I like the black ones better. They're not so fucking conspicuous. Well, I specifically got black for that reason, but I got to say, these things are friggin' awesome. I know. Everybody raves about them. They said it sounds like you're listening to headphones. Somehow kills the ambient sound. Okay. <laughs> Don't advertise. I'm a dork. <laughs>